Hello everyone. Good morning all of you. Welcome back to the video lecture uh, video lecture series. Okay. So uh, my dear friends, we were discussing about the <coughs> asymmetric synthesis in organic chemistry. Up to this, we have considered here the different models put forth by the different group of scientists to explain the diastereic selectivity in the formation of product when we have a carbonyl compound that is aldehyde or ketone with alpha chiral center so that's why as we have already one chiral centers in our substrate and we also have a pro chiral centers means that is a center which has the ability to convert into a chiral center by doing a chemical reaction then such products which are formed are called as diastereomers means they are having two chiral centers at the adjacent carbon atoms and hence what are the ratios of the formation of diastereomers what is the selectivity that is known as diastereomer selectivity we have seen the felkinan model okay and in that felkinan model we have seen the different effects rule number 1 2 and 3 now <coughs> the another scientist known as cramps another scientist known as cramps is also explaining how to form that chiral center in the reaction means the diastereomer selectivity in nucleophilic addition of an chiral aldehyde or ketone how it is explaining or how it is forming one product is getting major or one product is getting minor how it is explaining that can be explained that can be used okay that can be uh, modelized by using cramps rule okay so what the cramps rule has given the concept according to cram the model which was put forth by the felkin and an in that case we have place the we have considered the most stable conformation of the given chiral aldehyde or ketone and in that in newman projection the largest group we have placed it at the perpendicular direction at the perpendicular position at 90 degree to the carbonyl group in felkinan model but in case of cram cram's model what he has considered he has considered the interactions between the carbonyl group and the largest group at the alpha carbonate carbon atom he doesn't consider any eclipsing interaction between the group which is attached to the carbonyl carbon okay and the largest group which is at the alpha chiral centers okay so what does the cram cram considered that the largest group at the alpha carbon atom should be anti should be anti or it is away from the carbonyl carbon atom okay so let let us see here so this is the chiral carbonyl group <coughs> this is a uh, let us see this is a uh, al chiral aldehyde or ketone chiral carbonyl compound this is alpha carbon atom and it is chiral in nature all these l s m are different okay so what is this l stands for larger group l stands for larger group then m stands for medium group medium group and s stands for small group okay so whatever the orientation of this l s and m at the alpha chiral atom center alpha chiral center then in newman projection what he has proposed a model that this carbonyl carbon the front carbon atom in newman projection and this r group which is attached to the carbonyl directly at sp2 carbon atom okay they are we are writing them as like this 
CO R like this in Pelkinan. So in this case we are also writing the same but to show to view that this R is eclipsing to L means they are they are eclipsing to the uh, one each other to show this we have placed this R somewhat tilted to this but it is not like that it is like that it has 180 degree angle it has 180 degree it is not like that but to show that there is a L group behind the rear carbon atom behind on that rear carbon atom the la L group that is larger group is present and it is eclipsing to this R group okay to show this we have tilted this R to somewhat angle okay so this is the case so larger group is placing cram is placing the larger group is away from the carbonyl ca oxygen away from the carbonyl oxygen that's why the bond angle between this is very high okay so they are away from each other and so that's why as l is away from this carbonyl group and hence this m that is medium size group and small size group are closer they are closer to this carbonyl okay means in other words we can say that this carbonyl group is get flank it gets sandwich between this carbonyl group is get sandwich or flank between this m and s group medium and small group and l group that is larger group is away from the carbonyl group okay no doubt here this r group of this carbonyl carbon and this larger group on the alpha carbonyl carbon atom they are eclipsing r and l are eclipsing though they are eclipsing still the cram has considered that this is the model that from which we can explain the diastereic selectivity okay now in this case if it is the case now according to cram cram what is the cram rules cram's rule the cram's rule is suggested that if this is the situation First of all, this is the situation that larger group is away from the carbonyl group and the carbonyl group is, uh, is it is get sandwich or flank between the smaller and medium size group. Okay. And R group is get eclipsing to this larger group. If this is the situation, then our nucleophile is nucleophile is attacking from the side to that of small size group okay or it is from the as it is small size group so that's why we call it as a less hindered site less hindered site okay so nucleophile is attacking on the carbonyl carbon from the less hindered site and if you look after this carefully then the less hindered site is this one right hand side okay so that's why nucleophile is attacking from this side okay now when the nucleophile is attacking from this side this will be the product which is formed in major proportion okay so when nucleophile is attacking from right hand side the product formed by this attack will be major and when nucleophile is attacking from the left hand side in this case i am telling it is it will be a minor product okay so how it will be that we will work out okay so when nucleophile is attacking from this side we have uh, hydroxy we have hydroxy R and nucleophile so this is the front carbon atom and the rear carbon atom is methyl group uh, sorry medium group small group and this is larger group so this is the orientation and from this orientation we can say that this will be the product which is formed in major proportion major proportion okay now when nucleophile is attacking from the left hand side like this okay carbonyl group will be oriented on the right hand side and this will be the minor product okay so plus hydroxy nucleophile and this is r okay the remaining groups medium small and 
larger group will remain same okay so this will be your minor product this will be your minor product so this is the difference between these two and the resulting two products are the are having two chiral centers at the adjacent carbon atoms and the only difference between them that they have only change in they have change in configuration at only one carbon atom and such stereoisomers we call them as a diastereomers we call them as a diastereomers such stereoisomers are called as diastereomers so these are the two diastereomers of each other a pair of diastereomers is will be formed out of these one is major and one is minor my dear friends cram is proposing the another way to explain how that diastereo selectivity can be explained okay means cram is not explaining that how felkinen model is uh, bad or how it is not good or how it is uh, giving wrong results both the models are giving same results both the models are explaining the same thing but only the mode or the technique of explaining the uh, formation of diastereomeric excess is different okay so felkin and model and cram's rule are giving the same type of products no doubt okay keep in mind as well but this is the another way another approach let us say for explaining the diastereomeric diastereo selectivity in carbonyl compounds nucleophilic addition reactions okay so this is the uh, case now we will take some examples and from that examples we will uh, <coughs> we can work out how that uh, cram's rule can be understood okay <coughs> if you solve this problem by felkin and then you will get the same products if you solve this problem by cram's rule then you will get the same products okay only the approach is different in felkin and the larger group is taken as at the perpendicular direction to the carbonyl group okay and in uh, cram's rule what he has considered the larger group which is present at the alpha chiral center it, it is taken away from the carbonyl group that is which is eclipsing to the r group r group that is adjacent to the attached to the carbonyl group sp2 carbon atom okay now the problem is this is cs3 h c6 h5 carbonyl carbon and this is hydrogen so chiral aldehyde is there alpha carbon atom is chiral in nature and this is a pro chiral centers okay so when we have a nucleophilic addition over this carbon atom it can be connoted to a uh, new chiral centers so that's why it is a pro chiral center okay so whatever the name it will be we have to apply cram model so according to uh, the reaction is cs3 mgbr dryther okay methyl magnesium bromide that is grignard addition is there and uh, the question is what is the major and what is the minor product what is the major and minor product explain it on the basis of cramps rule okay or sometimes the products are given here uh, sometimes the products are given the structures are given and their percentage are given and you will ask explain how these percentage are forming in explain what is the reason behind the formation of these products in that proportion okay or you can you may have here erythro erythro is a major and 3o is a minor product in this case in this particular example okay so don't bother about this erythro and 3o these are only nomenclature systems in case of um, compounds okay <coughs> so now so we will solve this product problem so according to according to cram we will have a model that is carbonyl group so this hydrogen is attached to this we will have hydrogen here then the larger group is phenyl group this will be larger medium group is methyl group and hydrogen is the smaller group so i am keeping this larger group away from this carbonyl so that this is c6 h5 here i am i am keeping the smaller group that is cs3 and here i am keeping 
the hydrogen atom okay that is a smaller group now what is the position that nucleophile will attack this is the position now i am taking nucleophile for your consideration okay nucleophile will attack from this from this side okay so what will be the situation hmm so hydroxy h nucleophile then the remaining groups the rear carbon atoms having the same there is no change c6 h5 okay so this will be formed as a major okay now i am completing this major site so this is what eclip uh, sorry newman staggered formation this is this conformation is called as newman staggered formation okay now we have to write it in uh, newman eclipse conformation so that's why i am rotating that plane or you can directly write you can directly write or you can rotate also okay so i have to rotate this molecule in such a way that the so this is rear carbon atom i am keeping the substance attached on the rear carbon atom as it is so that's why rotate the fr front carbon atom so that's why hydroxy will become hydroxy will become bottom nucleophile will go to this side hydrogen will go to this side so this is the orientation hydroxy will become at the bottom hydrogen here and here nucleophile okay then the remaining rear carbon atom atoms methyl group hydrogen here and phenyl group c6h5 so this is eclipse what i am rotating that molecule because i have to rotate in um, i have to draw it in fisher projection to get the molecule in fisher projection to identify whether it is 3o or erythro because in the question that that may be asked what is which uh, 3o or erythro will be formed as a major product so that's why i am uh, writing this you can directly write this confirmation and uh, in zigzag manner that we have learned in pilkinan uh, okay i am showing both of you so this is the uh, eclipse newman now i have to write it in fisher so in fisher it will be like hydroxy front carbon atom nucleophile hydrogen then phenyl c6h5 then on the left hand side it is uh, methyl group and on the right hand side it is hydrogen okay now replace this nucleophile which is nucleophile is methyl group methyl magnesium bromide methyl group okay so this methyl methyl and hydrogen hydrogen are on the same side of the plane of the molecule this is the plane of the molecule and similar groups are on the same side of the molecule so that's why this product is a erythro product this product is a erythro isomer of erythro isomer okay and hence this erythro will be formed as a major one this erythro will be formed as a major one or as we have learned in pelkinan that can be applied here and you can write here um, you can write this molecule <coughs> keep uh, take this hydroxy take this hydroxy on this side okay to get the molecular plane hydroxy here then that's why uh, nucleophile will get here pos this position and hydrogen will get this position okay and the remaining phenyl group will take this, this position okay then rotate this accordingly this methyl group takes this position and this hydrogen will take this position okay now i am drawing this in zigzag manner so this is phenyl rear carbon atom which is having methyl methyl is above the plane methyl is above the plane then 
फ्रंट कार्बोनेटम हाइड्रोक्सी एंड द न्यूक्लियोफाइल इज ऑन द बॉटम साइड सो विच इज न्यूक्लियोफाइल मिथैलिक रूप इज न्यूक्लियोफाइल ओके मिथैल ग्रुप इज द न्यूक्लियोफाइल ओके सो दिस इज द दिस प्रोडक्ट एंड दिस प्रोडक्ट दे आर वन एंड द सेम ओके सो दिस विल बी फॉर्म एज अ मेजर वन दिस विल फॉर्म एज अ मेजर वन ओके सो नाउ दिस इज हाउ इट इज फॉर्मिंग एज अ मेजर प्रोडक्ट दैट वी हैव शोन यर नाउ कंसिडर अबाउट द द प्रोडक्ट विच इज फॉर्म इन ए माइनर प्रपोर्शन और हाउ दैट थ्री ओ विल बी फॉर्म दैट वी हैव टू सी so when nucleophile will attack from this side okay so what will the situation hydroxy nucleophile here and uh, this hydrogen here then methyl group smaller medium group this hydrogen group smaller group uh, and um, this phenyl c6h5 okay now rotate this uh, rotate this front carbon atom by 180 degree to get eclipse newman how to get that we are learned in last year okay hydroxy here uh nucleophile will go here and hydrogen will go here okay and the remaining groups that is methyl hydrogen and phenyl c6h5 draw this in a fissure so the product will be uh, c6h5 here hydroxy hydrogen hydrogen here nucleophile and nucleophile is methyl group then methyl group on the rear carbon atom on the left hand side and hydrogen on the right hand side now look at this 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 is the plane of the molecule this methyl groups and these two hydrogen atoms are away from each other or they are anti to each other or they are trans to each other in this fischer projection formula so that's why we use the 3o nomenclature 3o nomenclature in this case okay so that's why 3o will be minor 3o will be minor okay or this confirmation that is obtained by attack of nucleophile on this carbon carbon will be minor this will be minor this is the explanation of cramps model okay so this in this way we can explain how that cramps is explaining uh the formation of product or formation of diastereo selective reaction okay you can also apply by your own Pelkinen model on this molecule, you will get the same product. Okay, same the major product which is given by the Cram and Pelkinen are same. Okay, means diastereo selectivity is same in both of the case. Okay, now <coughs> the <coughs> next problem, next topic is chelation effect in Cram's model. Chelation effect in Cram's model. we know that chelation for chelation what we require we require a hetero atom at the alpha carbon center and that is hetero atom is it, it must have lone pair of electron for the donation and it will form a chelate when there is a presence of a metal ion which is capable of forming chelate such as titanium zinc then copper then mag magnesium then uh, manganese etc okay so the product is like this the explanation is like this cramps cyclic model or cramps chelate model chelate model okay so the electronegative atom or the atom which is having lone pair of electron if it is if it is present at the alpha carbon atom then such as i am taking this uh, 
medium size group whatever it may be so this m is having electronegative atom or group having lone pair of electron this is a heteroatom okay l s then and when we do a nucleophilic addition so what will be the situation the situation is like this this carbonyl oxygen and this medium uh, the uh, group at the alpha carbon atom which is having heteroatom that is electronegative atom or group which is they come close to each other and then then and then there is a formation of chelate ring is possible so they are taking the position like this so this is metal ion m plus metal ion this is this m plus is metal ion and this m is medium size group okay so this chelate ring is formed five membered chelate ring is formed and here the l group is here and s group is here now in this case this is lot of space this is larger group smaller group is on this side and large space is available so that's why my nucleophile will attack from this side okay so this is the explanation of cram's chelate model okay given by the scientist cram now if this is the case now what will happen <coughs> nucleophile uh, will attack from the left hand side then you will get nucleophile okay hydroxy group will form here and this is r group then m medium size group then this is s size group small size group and this is large size group so this will be formed as a major one this will be formed as a major one and which is the minor the case or the confirmation in which uh, nucleophile will attack from this side will be minor so hydroxy will now from this side mm, then r and r and this is nucleophile okay m medium size small size group and this is l so this confirmation will be a minor one a minor one okay so this is the difference between uh, cramps normal and cramps chelate model okay so accordingly we can explain the diastereic selectivity in given uh, reactions okay so that's why in this way we have completed the diastereic selectivity in case of aldol reactions and in case of nucleophilic additions to chiral aldehydes and ketones okay so i think this is sufficient for your uh, examination point of view uh, kindly uh, watch this videos carefully and uh, we will take also uh, more examples based on all these is asymmetric synthesis later on okay so thank you for watching this video have a nice day